actually ended our relationship for eight months. And every, every night for eight months, I would say out loud, I love you. You know, I never thought I would ever hear it from him like And Lydia, despite having no hope of anything ever rekindling between us, stayed in contact and like she would even go out of her way to show ways stuff. One day I was driving and I got a text that said, would you like to go out with me again? Lydia, I'm going to need you to stop the f up right now. I wholeheartedly agree with that sentiment. So this is the latest video circling the internet regarding shut up rings and we need to discuss it. What you saw in that video is what this couple chose to highlight in their wedding video. And a lot of people are appalled. So as you heard the groom say directly from his mouth, he left her for eight months and strung her along on his little line because he knew no matter what he did that she still wanted to be with him. Because even after eight months of not being together, she still showed him ways that she cared about him, prayed for him every night, etc. While he did absolutely nothing for her. And then after eight months of happiness and freedom and, you know, going through girls and living his best single life, he found himself not getting anybody better. And so he said to himself, you know what? Lydia has held me down even when I wasn't there for her. So he sends her a text and says, would you like to go back out with me? And Lydia literally says that she jumped at the opportunity with the swiftness. This situation has all the markings of a shut up ring. And I would honestly be surprised if this marriage lasted even five years. And that's not because of Lydia. But we need to stop celebrating so-called love that comes only when a woman is suffering. Because what's being uplifted in this moment is not her virtue, her kindness, or her heart, but her suffering. She's willing to put up with a bunch of nonsense, and now he's essentially chosen to marry her. And I'm not being mean here, but these vows are a big indicator of it. Because... What qualities does he love about her? What little quirks does she have? What are her hobbies? And what is actually horrific is that they have a child together and the child is at the altar. What is this teaching your child about your relationship, about love? The video is now deleted from their page, but before the comments got turned off and when it only had a few thousand views, people seemed pretty split down the middle. Half were women saying, oh man, I hope this happens to me and my ex. I know we're meant to be together. I want your love story. I want a happy ending like yours. And the other half are women saying, I hope this type of love never finds me. And is this really the end? One woman commented, I had this happen to me. And in a year, he had left again and we got a divorce. And many women said something along the lines of, he changed his mind again. But the common denominator was the theme. I was just the person he came back to because he knew he could come back to me. He knew I would always be there. And then he came back and it didn't work out and it was not happily ever after. And the problem with this is that it teaches young girls that this kind of love is something to want when the truth is that you should never have to beg anybody to see your worth. A man who loves you will see your worth automatically. And also your worth in a relationship should not be solely tied to how much you do for the other person because that sounds like he loves your utility, not you. What happens if you're no longer useful? What happens if you get sick or if you have a difficult pregnancy and you can't do all of the things that you once did for him? If you can no longer serve him, will he still love you? For 80% of male spouses whose wives receive a terminal diagnosis, the answer is a resounding no. And furthermore, a man who picks you based on your availability slash loyalty is a man of poor character. As women, we should never reward a man's indifference with loyalty. When you do this, you are picking up a lot of slack for him as well as setting a wild expectation for the rest of your relationship. A man who has basic respect for you would never encourage you to keep yourself available and wait around for him if he broke up with you while he finds himself. He would make it clear that things are over and that you should also move on. But before this couple got to this point, there were many, many red flags. And so the question you want to know the answer to and what this video is about is how can you tell it's a shut up ring in advance? So let's start with the number one sign. And that is, did you have to ask for it, especially more than once? A man should be excited about you. He should be overjoyed and excited thinking about spending the rest of your lives together. So if you're the one who had to kind of get this thing out of him or give him an ultimatum, that's a major sign of a shut up ring. 
Another major sign is that if it's been 5, 10, 20 years or whatever amount of time, I'm sorry, but he doesn't want you. People shouldn't marry people that they don't want to marry. But as we've discussed before, they will do it because of your utility and because they're afraid of being lonely. They bend to social pressure easily. They don't want to own their feelings and lose their benefits of being with you. They still get on-demand physical intimacy and domestic labor. They still get your company. They just don't want to commit to you. So they're going to be resentful and act like you're forcing their hand. When in reality, they're just being greedy and trying to have their cake and eat it too. Which is ironic since that's exactly what the groom looked like in the video when he was kind of describing their relationship. He looked exactly like the Cheshire cat who got to eat the birdie. So this guy is the perfect definition of a shut up ring. This couple had been together for a decade, have two daughters, and haven't been married. And he embarrassed her during their vows because he was pissed that he finally had to marry her. Like maybe she put her foot down or her family put their foot down and he felt like he was made to do it. But he was enjoying all the benefits, but instead should have been a grown man and broken it off if he didn't want her. But like most XYs, he thinks that he's going to get Margot Robbie or some model or OnlyFans girl and that you're getting in the way of that. And so he's going to mistreat you and resent you. It's ridiculous, but don't let men hang out in your world without commitment for a decade. And don't have children with men you're not married to. Those are the types of situations most likely to end in a shut up ring. Another major sign is that if he humiliates his bride at the wedding with wedding pranks. Bonus points if you discuss not wanting to have cake shoved in your face before the wedding and he does it anyway. Countless wedding industry professionals say that wedding pranks are one of the biggest indicators of eventual divorce. Marriage can be hard and it's mostly about two people growing together. So think a little bit about what you would like your future spouse to praise about you at the altar. What do you want him to love about you? Do you want to be crying, remembering the past out of sadness? Or someone who accepts the good and the bad about you, who truly loves you for who you are? I think we all know the answer to that. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more. So this is day seven of me posting on YouTube. I feel like I am slowly but surely getting my YouTube mojo back. I appreciate all of you, especially those of you who've shown me a lot of encouragement and support over this last year. If you like my message and want to support this channel, I put my PayPal and Venmo here. Thanks again. So I was in a relationship with a guy for six years. And a lot of people say, oh, well, it doesn't matter because you were young when you were together. It doesn't matter. And amount of time is amount of time. And after we graduated high school and I was like going through college, I was going through cosmetology school. He was going through like um, a bunch of like, like fire academy and like blah, 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 EMS stuff. And I begged for two years straight for a ring. I begged like I degraded myself I said would you please marry me will you you know like propose to me hey these are rings I think are really pretty for no reason whatsoever I did that I was that bitch and constantly he shut me down he was like no if you have to keep asking for it I'm not gonna do it I don't like that you constantly ask me about this I'll marry you when I'm ready and there were several instances of like me getting gifts and thinking this was the big proposal for it to just end up in like a pair of earrings or a necklace or something like that and it would be like christmas or my birthday and i would constantly just be let down and disappointed so whatever fast forward after like we're getting towards like the end of our relationship at this point and i am emotionally like checked out of our relationship at this point like i've had enough all that's left for me to do is physically leave and by the time i was ready to physically leave him i had my car packed up like i had a friend come get my shit with me and we got all my shit in my car and we were ready to go right he comes home confronts me leaving pulls me away from my friend and he was just like hey i was gonna propose to you and you're going to ruin it by leaving. He said this to me on a dirt road out in front of his house as I had my car packed up and was ready to fucking go. He was finally like, oh, I'll finally give you that shut up ring if you'll just stay and, you know, uh, continue to just be here for me while I just emotionally neglect you for the rest of our fucking lives together. So yeah, no. Ladies, if you have to ask over and over and over again, he ain't it. He is not it. Value yourself.